we as humans ourselves are highly social and so much of our lives revolves around communication. And then you see these tiny critters on the floor and you see that they also communicate, right? They, they follow each other and they, they seem to coordinate their actions. And immediately you, you start to feel some kind of connection to these guys. So what I find most fascinating about ants is how they organize their social lives, uh, how they interact, um, how they partition tasks in a colony, and how these interactions between rather simple individual insects gives rise to these very complex emergent properties at the level of the colony. But at the same time, that same behavioral complexity also makes social insects very challenging as study systems, especially if you want to do functional genetics like uh, knocking out genes or making transgenic lines. And so we've tried to work around that problem by working with a rather unusual ant species, the clone raider ant. They are on the order of two and a half to three millimeters long, so we can keep many hundreds or thousand ants in a fairly small Tupperware box. The species doesn't have queens. Colonies are composed of only workers and they reproduce asexually, so they don't have to mate, but they simply clone themselves. And those features make it a very good model system if you want to develop genetic tools. In the simplest form, we just keep them in very small petri dishes. And then every ant in such a colony has an individual color tag. So we're interested now in the genetic basis of the social behavior. And so in terms of the communication, we've started to look at genes that encode what we think are the pheromone receptors that the ants use to smell, essentially. And those are genes that are mostly expressed in the antennae of the ants. So we have a setup in the lab now where we can destroy the function of one gene that's crucial for the functioning of a whole group of odorant receptor genes. And it turns out when you take out that gene, this whole social communication system breaks down. It just walks around as if it were looking for the colony, but it has no way of detecting the colony because it can't perceive the chemical cues anymore. Another part of our functional genetic toolkit is trying to make what's called transgenic ants, where we take a genetic construct and try to insert it into the genome of the ants. So we keep the ants in these small dishes. We have inserted genes to cause these ants to express fluorescent proteins. So if you look very closely at this colony, among the white pupa that the ants are sitting on top of, you should see one that is visibly pink. These ants carry a different fluorescent protein in the sensory neurons of their antennae. So in principle, we can look at the level of fluorescence in these neurons, and it should go up and down with activity in the cells. We started this project about six and a half, seven years ago with this long-term goal of being able to do behavioral genetics and, and eventually behavioral neuroscience at a level that at least approaches more conventional model systems. And that opens up a lot of questions that I think until very recently were really completely inaccessible to, to people working on social insects. Mm -hmm.